So here I am in the glorious city of Hangzhou. I'm really excited to be here. I'm here for a week. I'm going to be exploring digital strategy and doing lots and lots of work with a school here. I'm really excited to get going, but I thought I'd just share a little video with you whilst I'm here. Uh, one of the things I'm talking about this week while I'm here is digital strategy, and part of that is going to be around the conversations around using AI in education. Now, uh, if you've been following me and what I've been sharing recently, Obviously, this is a huge, huge thing in schools. Massive potential for reducing your workload. Uh, really, really fantastic opportunities there. But the thing is, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, so I wanted to spend a moment just thinking about uh, a few things. I saw a great post, uh, post yesterday, for example, and uh, got me really thinking about um, sort of the, the environmental impact. Uh, in the article, and uh, I'll put it in the comments below. In the article, they're talking about for every chat GPT prompt that you write, you need about half a litre of water uh, just to cool down a processor. So, is there an environmental impact for us to actually be using um, uh, uh, large language models and other uh, sort of generative AI tools like chat GPT? The other thing to consider with all of this as well is uh, the whole issue around digital citizenship. Now, what's been great has been seeing the conversations lots of people have been having about prompt craft, which then leads on to thinking around literacy, and that opens up even bigger conversations around improving the knowledge around uh, computational thinking and all these different things. But when it comes to thinking around those sorts of things, why do we not end up thinking more about how we could then be using other things? For many, many years, we've been using normal search engines. Sure, Bing has now got uh, Bing Chat in there. We can access ChatGPT, GPT-4. Uh, through that, we can use DALI-3, uh, get built in there to make images for us, do loads of different things. But if we're considering the environmental impact around those sorts of things, then should we not be thinking about, firstly, one, using the tools for what they're appropriate for in the moment they're supposed to be being used for, and also on top of that, what about teaching and reinforcing just how to use tools generally? So, Boolean operators, for example, using search engines such as Bing or Google, uh, why aren't we spending more time thinking about actually how can we teach our young people how to use these tools effectively? If there is going to be an environmental impact in using tools like ChatGPT, then should we not actually be considering <coughs> how we can use the right tool for the right job. One of the things in the article talks about uh, using uh, a warship, uh, for, for a, bringing a warship to a knife fight. Uh, that's not the best uh, example, but um, sure, I think like with all good technology, like all jobs, we need to use the right tool for the right job at the right time and for the right purposes. So that's my little share for you today here in the glorious city of Hangzhou. If you know me, you'll uh, probably guess where I'm sat outside uh, enjoying a nice cup of coffee right now. For now, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. And I'll try and share a few things each day whilst I'm here. For now, this is me, Mark Anderson, ICT Evangelist, saying over and out.